click on the subscribe button if you have not subscribed yet and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update. Hi guys, Monica here. I hope you all are doing great. So in today's video, we are going to learn about a very powerful component in the screen flows that is data table. So with the help of data table, we can uh, show our users, our customers, list of records like list of accounts, list of contacts, list of their orders. Okay. But uh, not only that, with the data table, uh, you can let your customers select uh, those accounts, select those contacts as well. What I mean is you can convert that data table into a multi-select pick list as well. So if you want to learn how you can do that, how you can take benefits of it, then keep on watching. But before that, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, uh, click on the subscribe button below. It will be awesome. Now let's dive straight into the video. Okay, so for creating today's example, let's uh, create a new flow. Go to this create button and go to flow. It will directly uh, redirect you to the flow builder. Now, of course, we want to show the data table. So we have to create a screen flow. Uh, let's create. Now here, let's click on the plus sign and let's take in screen element. On the screen element in the left hand side, you can see here is data table. Let's drag it here. So what is a data table? Data table is basically a list of records. So you can uh, show a list of contacts, list of opportunities, list of accounts and etc. Okay. Now uh, let's see is properties. Here we can see it has API name, label and after that in the configuration data source, you can see source collection. In here, if I'll go to the I button, it says enter a record collection to populate the table. So here we can add any record collection variable okay so what we'll do is we will just close it and first uh, in today's example we are going to show all the accounts like list of accounts okay uh, you can show any list if you want this is just an example so showing a list of account means getting the list of accounts from the database okay so for getting a list of record we will take a get record element first let's take a get record element and write here get accounts okay getting accounts to show in the data table okay now in the object you will take account and in condition we will take all the accounts okay let's click here all records and done so in this get records uh, we have got all the accounts from our database now let's add the data table to show these accounts let's add a screen element and drag the data table here okay now let's go to the properties mm, show account will be the api name accounts will be the label so if you want to customize the table title, you can add the label name here. When you will check on it, uh, now the accounts will be the table title. Okay. Now let's go down here, configure data source where it is asking us to type a source collection. What is a source collection? Enter a record collection to populate the table. Here we will add a record variable. And in our case, our record variable is the get record element that we have just created. Okay. After that, it is asking us uh, about the three options, row selection mode, okay? So in the data table, we have three options. We can make it a multi-select data table, we can make it a single select data table, or we can make it just view only, okay? Let's first try a view only in the configuration column. So here we can select which column to show and which column to hide, right? So let's say we will call account number. Uh, here is one more option column options custom column label if you want to give a column label by yourself then type this otherwise it will take the default label uh, done let's add one more field which will be name because account name is important and let's click on done that's it let's keep two fields for now now for component visibility let's keep it always and in the advanced section okay in the advanced section you have two options first is manually assign variable okay so if you want to store the values that uh, the user have checked on okay so you will click on the manually assign variable and you will store those uh, values in that variable right second option is revisit screen values which means uh, if the user is on the first screen and he has selected five 
accounts right and he goes to the next screen when he will click on the previous button again what should happen there are two options okay first is use values when the user last visited a screen that means in this case those five account will be selected second is refresh inputs to incorporate changes elsewhere in the flow so with this option when he will click on the previous button all the account will be refreshed and no account will be selected okay we won't use the manually assign variable and this here because we have chosen the view only mode okay so let's just see the view only mode first and then we'll go to the two modes further let's click on done um okay let's give the screen name account list and let's click on done okay so here we have got all the accounts and we have shown all the accounts in a data table let's save it and add the data table data table example okay and let's save it activate it so now i have a lightning app uh, which is flow series in which i add all my flow examples so we are going to add this example also there um let's click on the flow series button and let's edit the page it will redirect us to the app builder Now here we will add our flow. Um, let's add our flow here at the top. And now let's select the flow data table example and save it. Activation and save. Okay, now let's go back and view our flow in action. So we have added the data table in the flow, which you can see here. And in this, we have added two columns, account number and account name. Let's add few more columns. It feels a little empty here. Um, configure columns, add column. Let's add last modified date. Done. And let's add one more. Um, Billing city maybe and let's click on done. Save. Activate. And let's go there and refresh. Yeah, now it's looking nice. Um, I can't see billing city once again. Let's add Billing City again. Um, Billing City. Done. And done. Let's save it. And activate it. Okay, now let's go back to the flow screen. Uh, the flow series. And let's refresh it. So here's our data table with all the four columns that we have chosen there. Okay. Now this is the view only data table type. Now let's go back to our flow and change the data table type. Um, let's change it to single selection. Okay. So when you select the single option, it will tell you that the component stores the single record from the selected row as output. So basically the user will select only one uh, record. And it will store that selected value as like the selected row as the output. Okay. Now we have one more option, which is require user to make a selection. Uh, if we'll check on it, uh, this will be required. So the user cannot go to the next screen without selecting at least one option. Okay. Now let's click on done and see the changes. Let's save it. Activate. And let's go back to our series and refresh. So here you can see now we have radio buttons uh, before the account number. So basically uh, now this is a ta data table which asks user to select at least one value, right? 
So in like many of the scenarios, we want the user to like select a course name or select a city name, select a subject name. So basically, if you want the user to select one value, you can use single uh, select a data table. Let's go back and let's change this to multi select um, multiple. Okay. In multiple, uh, we have some more options. Uh, first of all, it is saying that the competence stores a collection of records from the selected rows. Okay. So when the single record was selected, uh, the component was storing the selected value as the output, the selected row as the output. Now it can be multiple rows. So it is saying that uh, the component will store a collection of records. Okay. The collection of uh, selected rows as output. Right. Now we have uh, two more options, which is minimum row selection and maximum row selection. So let's say if you uh, type minimum row selection is one. So basically uh, the user cannot... Uh, leave it blank they have to at least select one option from this list okay now you will select option uh, maximum row selection five which means that the user can select maximum of five accounts after they have selected the five accounts all the other account list will be uh, like disabled they cannot select that anymore okay i'll show it to you in uh, the example uh, all the fields are same other than that let's save it and activate and refresh our series so here you can see now we have check boxes uh, before the account number so we can check multiple accounts okay but uh, let me show you what happens when we select all five accounts one two three four five you see when you select five accounts all the other check boxes are disabled so now you cannot uh, select any more accounts okay so that is the limit condition if you want to uh, set a limit that uh, you can select only two accounts only three accounts only 10 accounts you can do that okay uh, i saw an example the other day example was that uh, a customer was doing an order for the books and he wanted to select multiple books so there was book names from the books object uh, of course and he was selecting multiple books and then he click on next and then payment processor and the book order was done okay so there are multiple examples and scenarios where you can use the data table and you can uh, take the benefits of it uh, that's up to you that's up to your imagination and your organization's work that uh, how and when you can use them this is just a simple example now let's go back to our data table there's one more thing which is pending let's cover that as well i know this example is getting a bit uh, longer but uh, there are so many options what can i do okay so uh, do you remember in the advanced section we have this manually assigned variable and these two values okay so let's manually assign the variables so if you're uh, making it view only then uh, this option doesn't matter but if you're making it single selection or multiple selection you will uh, save its values somewhere right you have to use the values later so in manually assign variables you have two values one is first selected row and second is selected rows okay so if you want the first selected row value then save it in a record variable if you want the selected rows value then save it in a record collection variable because that can be multiple rows right so for the first selected row let's create a variable a record collection variable first row data type record object will be account of course because we are saving account values input output and done and for the selected rows let's create a record collection variable selected rows and record object account let's click on allow multiple values and available for input output and done okay after that uh, first option we are checking is uh, when the user will go to next screen and he will come back to the previous screen all the accounts should be a uh, check that we have checked previously okay okay so in the data table uh, below the minimum and maximum row selection there is an option which is default selection if you want the rows to be selected when we go previous uh, we have to set the default selection and in the default selection we will add the selected rows selected rows is the variable that we have created for uh, here the selected rows option okay now let's click on done Let's save it, activate and check.
So now here when we will select two accounts, let's say and click on next. This is the next screen. Let's select previous and check if the accounts are there. Yes, the two accounts are selected. Okay. Now let's check the second example. Okay, so now for the second option, if you don't want to save any values when we click on a previous, let's go to data table again. And what we'll do is we'll select the second option. And after that, uh, here in the default selection, we have to make it blank because in the default selection, if we will uh, add the selected rows, that means uh, we are storing the values somewhere and we are uh, storing the values in the data table. So we will click on previous and the value should show. But uh, if you want to like refresh the values, if you don't want to show the values there, then the default selection will be empty. Let's click on done save and activate it and let's check our app now when we'll go to previous uh, all the list will be refreshed and no account will be selected let's select the two accounts here and let's go next and previous and here you can see all the account are refreshed okay so if you want to save the values if you want to store the values then choose the first option and uh, add the default value in that and if you want to refresh the screen then choose the second option and remove the default value okay uh thank you so much for watching that was today's example i hope you found this useful i'll see you super soon in my next video till then bye bye take care and keep learning